my own Emmanuel Ijoma. Uh, Baba Youth. <laughs> God bless. Praise the Lord. Our general director. They call they say ACO. Yeah, I don't know what that one means. What I know is that this is our guy. He's our coordinator, he's our Oga, he's our father, he's our friend. He has remained a very good friend and remained a wonderful man to walk under. I want to thank God for this opportunity and I want to bless mommy. Mommy, God bless you, ma. Thank you for looking after him for us. We noticed that he's... Um, our daddy, our daddy is putting on weights on all sides. And who is responsible for that? Mommy. 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 God bless you, ma. <laughs> we thank God for a wonderful day like this. This is my first uh, immersion. At first, I was asking myself, what is this immersion all about? If for the praise alone, the worship that we had here today, we should do it every month. So God bless you. Where the, the idea came out from, may the Lord continuously water it Amen. for more and greater ideas in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you, Lord, that we are still alive and counted among the living. Not only have you given us life, you have sustained us. Thank you for health. Thank you, Lord, that we are not hearing of terrible diseases like cancer, whatever they call it. None of those terrible diseases will locate us in Jesus' name. We bless your holy name and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My assignment today is that I will uh, share with us the tradition of house fellowship. I thought of it. What is the tradition of house fellowship? So first of all, I try to define tradition. And Bible tells, the dictionary tells me that tradition is the transmission of custom or beliefs from one generation to another generation. So the continuation of that creates what we call tradition. And then what is house fellowship? A house fellowship is a small group of adults or children who are committed to regularly meeting together to worship. I want us to take emphasis, emphasize, look at those things carefully. To worship, for worship, Bible study, prayers, and services in the house of a, one member. These services will take place in one member's house. The purpose is to equip and create disciples out of members and train new leaders. I'll take it again. It's very essential for us to know what house fellowship really means. It says house fellowship is a small group of... And I'm praying that each and every one of us's house fellowship will be an equipping ground for men and women of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, to do this job, I had to search for the root of house fellowship. Where did it all come from? How did it all start? Who originated it? So I took my text from Exodus 18 and we read from verses 13. Can we just turn there quickly? Exodus chapter 18 and we'll take it from verse 13 and I read he says, and it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from morning unto evening. Verse 14. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that, you, that thou doest to the people? Why is it thou thyself alone? And all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his law. 
And then Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Verse 18. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou and this people that, has, that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Verse 19. Hearken unto my voice. It says, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be, that, and be with thee. Be thou for the people to God words, that thou mayest bring the curses unto God. Verse 20. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and law, and shall show them the way therein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Say, moreover, thou shalt provide out of all these people able, these are qualifications I want us to look at. The qualifications of those who should be, you know, house fellowship or leaders or who should lead people. Verse 21. It said, moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. That's number one. Number two, such as fear God. Number three, Men of truth. Number four, those who hate covetousness and placed such over them to, rule, to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. I will stop there. Now, we see that Jethro was the originator of what we call the cell church today. When she, she saw, he saw in, uh, in Moses that he would sit down with the, uh, three million people and judging their matters. Of course, I'm not sure he would have lived up to he became 120 if he had continued that way. Rather than kill himself, he got counsel to break the congregation into small groups and put people who have abilities, who are able, people who fear God, people who stand by the truth, and people who hate covetousness, who will not take the people, other people's things because they are put over them. To put them as leaders, and he would teach them how to deal with the people, and then they in turn will you know, relate to the people, and when things become too tough for them, they will pass all of those difficult ones to Moses. Now, we're looking at tradition. This tradition started in the days of Moses and had been passed on from one generation to another. Now, the house fellowship leader, or the person who becomes a leader of house fellowship, must be one who ends up looking after the flock of the Lord as a shepherd. To be a shepherd, you must know God, you must fear God, you must be able to deal with people with the Spirit of God in you. Because every house fellowship leader, every pastor becomes the God that the people will meet and get to know. Amen? Now, even many of us worship our pastors. And it's true. Everything our pastor says is final. We don't even bother to go and say, can I go and ask God? No, we don't. And I know I have a witness in the house. Once the pastor has spoken, it's final. But one thing we must understand, each and every one of us have the ability to become a leader or a shepherd. Until we all accomplish the word called grace. And what is grace? It's an acronym. It says G for grace is growth. R for grace is reliance. A in grace is for awareness. C in grace means church planting. E, which is the last letter in grace, means evangelism. This is all that makes up the house fellowship. You must be full of that grace. You must 
be ready to grow in the things of God. You must be relevant. You must be relevant to the things of God. You must be one who is fully aware of what his or her responsibility is in the body of Christ. You must be somebody who is opt out for church planting, to plant churches and to bring about the growth of the body of Christ. And finally, to be an evangelist. Because what are the benefits of house fellowship? One, it fosters unity among members. Secondly, it helps people to connect, to grow, and to receive care. The house fellowship is a care center. And I tell you, any house fellowship that is not caring for its flock is not a house fellowship. Any center that is not meeting the need of the people who are members of his congre of his uh, of his center is not a house fellowship. People who are hungry that are in your fellowship must be fed. Those who don't have clothes to wear in your fellowship must be provided for. You must be a lover of souls. And until we get to that point, our kind of leading is not qualified yet to be called of God. Obedidam took a risk. If he had stood by the reasons he had or what the things he heard about that ark, it would never have entered his house. Because the person whose house the ark was before his it was totally brutalized by the ark. When he took, him, took the ark into his house, the house began to blossom. His family began to blossom. And that's the thing to say to you that any man or woman who opposes his or her house for house, for the house fellowship has allowed the ark of God to come in. And once the ark of God enters your house, you can say goodbye to poverty. You can say goodbye to sickness. I'm a witness. I have also experienced it too. I remember years ago, since the day I asked, I allowed the, uh, the act to come into my house. And I began to look after God's children. I began to turn the house, my house into a praying house where we prayed every week. Miracles never stopped. Till this day. I'm a living miracle. And I thank God for what he's used me to, to do in my own center. My center is flourishing every day. But I like to tell you the truth. I like to tell you one truth. It's not that I just wished it. God saw my heart. It was a sincere desire to keep his flock. A sincere desire. People come with all manners of problems. People come to lie. A woman had come to my house once, had put clothes in her stomach and claimed she was pregnant. We took her to the hospital. She refused. She said, no, don't take me to the hospital. But my wife insisted. We took her to the hospital. That's how we found out she was not pregnant. Even before this time, she had collected money for a and all of that from us. So you will meet them. You will see them. Don't cast them out. Let your house be a place of refuge. That's a house fellowship center. A house of refuge. That house of refuge will open the heavens over you. So that your blessings are incontrollable. They just keep on pouring down. There are so many things I will have told you. We don't even have enough time to tell you anything. But I, I just want to say to you, follow the tradition. Be a giver and have a spirit of a giver. God bless you. Please, can we jam our hands together very well? The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. The key point from what he said that don't cast anybody away. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. To take us in the second uh, talk, please just bear with us, we're soon close, is the Zona Coordinator in charge of South South, and also is the Regional Coordinator for Region 5. Please, can we clap hands together? So welcome Pastor Dave Igodaro. Let's clap for him because it's, not, it's 60 years, so let's clap 60 years. 
clapping for him as he comes to the podium. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to thank our Father in the Lord, uh, the ACO, uh, Daniel Dwale, and uh, congratulations, our mommy. Let's bow our heads briefly. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for beginning with us in this meeting this evening. As we go into your word in statistics, please speak to our hearts and grant us grace to be doers of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. I would just use only one scripture. We are talking about statistics and record keeping in house fellowship. Revelations 20 verse 12. Revelations 20 verse 12. For time's sake, I'll just paraphrase it. There are books of records and there are books. But men will be judged eventually in the line with the content of the book of records. Paraphrasing Revelations 20 verse 12. The Bible itself is replete with, the Bible itself is a compendium of records, like we all know. And this evening, our daddy was talking to us. He said, our God is a counting God. He's interested in numbers. And he said, the more we are, the better it is. If you go through your phones or your dictionary, you see diverse definitions of statistics. But it's important I bring out very salient things in that definition. Anything worth being statistics must be something that you can use to analyze information. Information gathered, you should be able to analyze it. And the analysis you've done should be able to help you in planning and decision making. So if it doesn't, if the information you have gathered does not enable you to plan, and make future references, and then for decision making, then it is not statistics. Statistics must be replicable. You must be able to use the system you use to gather it continuously, sustainably, for others to be able to use it. Of course, we all know that throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, records were kept. So it's important in-house fellowship that uh, data, statistics, records keeping, and data analysis. Take note of that data analysis is key. It's not enough to just keep the records and keep the books in one corner. We must be able to use those records we have gathered in form of statistics, turn them into data, analyze them, and use them for planning and decision making. In the House Fellowship Department, we have four major books of records. Yeah? We have the HF1, they are one to four. The foundation, which is the most important, is the center, the center booklet. This, this is the center booklet. And once you open the center booklet, the very inlet, the very first page you find inside gives you explanatory notes of various line items in the form. You have, they are all the same sheets, yeah? They are replicable. So once you open it, the very first sheet is going to show you, explain to you how to use the form, what each of the abbreviations contain. You'll find on the form all the names of the members of the center should be listed. In the, in the register. List everybody's name according to their entry. As new members come, you include their names. It's very important. You have a column where you have uh, the, the various categories. Adults, the children, the teenagers, and the adults. So as you write their names, you also indicate in that column, is this person a child, a teenager, or an adult? There's a column where you have the uh, transferred members, others who are coming from other centers or from other places, they have a column. So I'll, in line with their names, you record it. And then at the end of the day, you mark 
as each person comes in each of the uh, house fellowship meetings. Very critical in that form is also the altar call. The house fellowship is the church. So the, whoever is the leader, he is the pastor in that church. There is a column in that center form for altar call. So if there is a salvation in that Sunday meeting, ensure it is ticked. And the parish coordinator should be very, very interested in that part of the form. He should be able to look at it at the end of the month and know how many persons were saved in the center. That is very important to him. He wants to know also how many first-time callers. If anybody who comes to the center is a first-time caller, there's a column for it. Indicate it. Those are very important parameters. The parish coordinator who has the HF2, the next book of records, he will look at those parameters and make use of them. At the end of the month, you calculate the total, do the averages, including the income, by way of offering, and then you do the average for the monthly. Your house fellowship, the center form, is the foundational document that goes into the parish, and the parish form goes into the area, and the area form goes in into the provincial booklet. Now, the provincial coordinator uses the HF4, the fourth book of record, and he is very interested in the cumulative attendance of all the parishes, the areas in the province. And what are we looking at? It is very important that you take note of what we call the real attendance. So for the provincial coordinator, his vital, very, very vital information he wants to look out for is the real attendance. What is the real attendance? It measures the attendance in the house fellowship relative or comparative to the Sunday service attendance. In other words, we want to know how many persons attended house fellowship today, Sunday, compared to how many persons were in church in the morning. It is recorded in percentage, compared in percentages. So our target as parishes, area, provinces, region, and national is to grow towards 50% real attendance. In other words, half of the people who were in church in the morning are in the house fellowship in the evening. You and I know what the statistics is today. But our drive is to use you and me to bring it to 50%. Is that doable or not? Yes. Only two persons said it's doable. Is it doable or not? Yes. So, as Every one of us who is taking part in this immersion is a challenge to you. When we go back, work with the cell leaders. In fact, you become cell leaders. You become hosts. You must have centers in your homes, be teachers in those cells, ensure that those who are in church in the morning come to the house fellowship so that the real attendance will grow. And it's only then we'll be able to uh, contribute to the growth of the global church. It is the responsibility of all parish coordinators, area, provincial, and ourselves, the regional coordinators, to ensure that proper training is, you know, made, is given to everyone who has a business, who is part of the house fellowship system. So when we all go back, let's ensure that we come together and ensure that we all understand the workings, the proper workings of these forms, particularly the center form. And no, no service is complete, no house fellowship is complete on the monthly basis without these forms going through the process. Center, parish, area, province, and then it comes to national. I would like to conclude. Research has shown that Several churches in the early church, in the early times in the West, they all failed. Most of them failed. There's a book written by our Father in the Lord, the uh, uh, ACU. That book he calls The Vision Driven Church. In that book, he indicated that most of those churches that failed, they failed because they could not manage their harvest. The core reason was that there were no growth, sustainable, and enhancement skills monitoring. 
they were growing, but they did not record the strategies. They did not record the pattern with which they were getting the growth. And so most of them failed. Why? Because they could not respond to the speed of change. Simply put, those churches that failed, they did not manage their statistical analysis properly that they would have used to plan and guide their growth for the future in response to the change of times. Please let's stand to our feet. I want us to pray that God will use you, he will use me to ensure that every record from the center will be taken properly. We will record it accurately, properly, in a form that it will be usable, that we can use it to plan for the future growth of the church. I want you to pray that prayer. That you will be a vessel that God will use to ensure that proper records, accurate records are kept so that we can plan properly for the growth of the house fellowship and by implication the growth of the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you. In this brief time of fellowship, we trust you that we'll go back with the words we have heard. That Lord God Almighty, by the time we receive the records in the coming months, our real attendance would have shut up. No man will share the glory. We'll be careful to return all the glory to you. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.